down to, you know, I want to weigh 190 by the end of the year. This month I need to be down to 210. What's weekly activities I can do on that? Eat clean, you know, six and a half days, work out five days, work out six days. What kind of workout? Did that work? Did that not work? I need to adjust that. You see? Because we manage, what do we manage? We don't manage time. We manage what? what we do that time. The activities, what we do, the decisions, right? And now we're down to writing those decisions down that matter the most, like we talked about on the chart, which could be 100 doors or 200 calls. You see what I mean? And that is what you manage not time. That's what you manage. Are you with me? And then you get somebody to hold you accountable. And the best person that can hold you accountable in the world is somebody that you pay a lot of money to hold you accountable, like a master's. Because what happens if they fail to hold you accountable? What's going to happen to them? Yeah, they're no longer going to get a check. They're going to be fired too. So they're, they've got skin in the game too. Now your buddy may not be the best person because like you're probably not going to fire them. I mean, I would, but you may not fire them. So you not fire your buddy. All right. What all has you having on this? Give me share with me like what you're getting out of this tool. It just makes it a lot more manageable, I think. Yeah. You know, when you set the lofty goals, of, you know, you want to think big, but it gets very overwhelming. But when you break it down, it's just, that's not bad. I got that's time to great aha. Great aha. You can check it down. It's all in one piece of paper, which is what I love the most. What else? What else are you getting out of this tool? It's like it's like what if we can move that big boulder and turn away little chunks at a time to get that big boulder in a manageable move. There you go. Put it ready to move it. That's it. Because like we said from the beginning, you don't control the big boulder or whether it moves, but what you do control is the activity you take, like hacking away at it day by day. Flat. And, and to piggyback on what Joe said, it it also forces you to think which which piece of the boulder to chip away first because we all know that some activities are more important than other activities. And that's been the theme of the day, right? So now if I wasn't tracking this, if I never wrote down like I've got to make 100 calls, knock on 200 doors to get 52, 57 leads, 52 leads, then how will I know if it works? Right? I wrote it down and then I go have a conversation with my coach and say like, I did 100 doors, 100 calls, 200 doors, and I only got 40 leads. Then what can I do? Knock on more doors. Knock on more doors. Or switch activities, right? But those are probably the two best activities, right? If I didn't do that, I might find myself where by the end of the year? Way off my goal. And then wondering why, like, it's not working. Well, this also builds your confidence because as you start to achieve those goals, then you know you can reach for higher goals and you feel more confident in what it is that you're doing, knowing that's that it. you can achieve that. It's like you got the secret code on how to get as many closings as you want, right? And you just control it here. If you if you constantly monitoring your activity, don't you go back and reevaluate? Well, I'm not proficient in this, and I tried. Instead of me knocking on 100 doors and closing only 40. Make myself more proficient so I'm close to 60 out of every 100. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so next week's activity could be like, the next 10 weeks' activity could be I'm going to practice my scripts. Also, right? There's another thing you put to your 4 and 1. The only way you know that is by learning and looking at this every week. Yeah, who else had their hand? <coughs> All right. Good, 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 good. You guys are getting this stuff. So, questions to ask yourself um, on the 4 and 1 elements. What is it that you want to accomplish? Remember, we talked at the beginning of the class, like, all that matters is what you really want, right? Whether or not you're doing the right thing, it's not up for us to judge. Is it moving you closer to your goal or not? That's the first question you got to answer for yourself. How are you going to achieve your goal? That's getting into the how. The only the how you're going to have to experiment. Remember, is it day night, or is it 10 minutes alone, or is it buy something, right? Is it 100 doors? Is it calls? Is it Facebook? What's my activity? Um, when are you going to accomplish these things? And then now you've got to chunk down into, into weekly mentors. Now you've got to chunk down into weekly metrics. So now, um, now that you've decided, like, okay, I need to knock on, uh, I need to make 100 calls and knock on 200 doors. The next big secret tactic becomes get it to your calendar. So this 401 tool is what feeds your calendar. This 401 tool is what feeds your calendar, and then you live by your calendar. 401 tool feeds your calendar, you live by your calendar. So. Um, now that you've decided what matters most, right? You've decided that it's the 100 calls and the 200 doors. I've got to go time block for that. And that's what I time block for. You don't really actually have to time block for every little minute of your life. Some people do, and that's okay. Uh, you may find that you don't have to do that. 
because you might be time blocking for the 80%. There, but seriously, you could time block everything. When they evaluate, um, uh, what's it in Bill Gates' schedule, you know, he actually has in there like, uh, you know, 652 brush teeth, 654 uh, comb hair. Like, that's actually what his schedule says. Like, and they got, and he's pretty successful. Um, some people don't go that far. So there's no right or wrong is what works for you. However, you want to make sure what goes in first. So it's Sunday night, and I'm looking at my weekly calendar, and I've got all of this time. What do I put in first? Lead gen, right? Yeah, the priority one. Which, by the way, uh, for your life may not be lead gen. It could be something spiritual or family or, you know, right around there. Because, you know, we believe about family then business. So it might be something along those lines. Those are your big rocks, right? You have big rocks inside of everything. Where do we get the term big rocks from? Does anybody know that? Where that comes from? There's a gentleman named Stephen Covey that talks about big rocks. Does anybody ever see that demonstration? Where they, yeah. Do you remember how that goes? Can you explain it? Or? Um, you want to explain it? I think I remember it. So you have a jar, yeah, and you get some big rocks, and you put those in the jar first, and they represent whatever is most important to you. So yeah. you might say family or career or a little bit of both. So you put all of those big rocks that represent those things in there. And then they say, okay, so can you fit anything else in here? Because it's full to the top and there's big rocks in there. So then you get a little jar of pebbles and you pour those in and they fill in around the big rocks. Yeah. And then you say, can anything else fit in? So then you took a jar of sand and yep. poured the sand and that got into little crevices. Okay, now can you fit anything else into it. And then you got a jar of water and poured the water into it. And that trickled in and got everything in. In that order though. Yeah, and that's the big lesson. You, you remember it perfectly. And what happens is, if you put the water in first, and then you put the sand in, and then you put the little rocks, guess what doesn't fit? The big rocks. And one of those big rocks is like, my marriage, my body, my health, my business, my personal financials, right? Those are the big rocks. They don't fit. It's just like you try to fit stuff in your trunk, put in the big suitcases first, right? I mean, it's just how it works. And, uh, and that's a big life lesson. So when you're looking at your calendar, you've got to realize that you've got big rocks. You know what those are now. You've got little pebbles. What do you suppose the pebbles are when it comes to stuff in your life? Yeah, or they matter because they're, they're pebbles. They're number five, maybe. There you go. They're probably number five, six, seven. That would be like the contracts. That are on fire. It would be some of those other things on the list. Like they matter just a little bit lower. That's why you don't do contracts before you do lead gen, right? Because you may not fit in lead gen. Because the contract could be another one, another one, another one. What do you suppose the sand represents in your life and your schedule? And that analogy. Things that come out of nowhere. Yeah, there you go. Like all little things that come out of nowhere. And like, or Xbox, or you know, <laughs> Pinterest, whatever your thing is, right? Whatever your thing is. We all have some things, right? Uh, whatever that is, right? Uh, Candy Crush for Glad, like any, whatever it is. <laughs> some little, or sand. Dude. That, and if you fill it with sand, you could just put sand in the bottom and those big rocks aren't filling. They're not fitting, right? Because those time's gone. And then the water represents like uh, a lot of the interruptions, other things like that that just show up. You have no control over, right? So um, Sunday night, I'm looking at my calendar. What am I putting in first? What are you putting in first? You've got that tool in front of you now, your 401. What are you putting in first? Give me an example. Like, what would you put in first based on what you wrote down today? That thing. There you go. It would be like um, on Monday, I'm going to do um, 25 calls. If I had to do 100 contacts this whole week, Monday I'm doing 25 contacts. If it's I'm going to knock on 200 doors, maybe do I do that all in one day or do I do 50 a day? Like, how does that work? It's up to you, right? But I'm blocking that. Where am I blocking it on the, the hours of my day? Prime time. I love it. What time is that? Morning. morning. In the morning. Awesome. You got it. You got it. Why would I do it that way? More energy. More energy. The most effective. People are saying yes more than any other time of the day. Right? My battery is the highest. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. You know, I'm an ISA and I just recently got my license. But this part is just really, really crucial. And when I started working with Camp Martin Keller, my prime time is the morning. And I would get emails, phone calls, and IMing, and I'm like, I sent this nasty email out. 
don't bother me. <laughs> Till 10 o'clock in the morning, that's when I go downstairs, I get my coffee, if there's anything you need, that's when I'll get back to you. And so, that's so, so important. Time blocking and having a schedule and getting those crucial things done first. Love it. It's key. Thank it's you for sharing key. that. Right? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm new to color, I keep saying I'm new, I'm new to color, but for years I've always done contracts for color for one of ages. And I'm like, man, let's do this all good week. They never return phone call. Now I find out why. Yep. Now I see why. Because I'm like, all I hear is a text back later on, I'll talk to you later. Talk to you. There you go. And that's what I used to get. I'm like, yep. these dudes are never reachable. Yeah. In the morning, right? Yeah, that's right. Good. Wow. That's why I love this office, right? You ever look at the signs that show up in the morning on doors? Mm -hmm. And yeah. by our fearless yeah. leader? Don't knock, don't scream, don't you know, don't no, slide a no, note on their door, don't breathe. I, I took know. a picture of that yesterday. Right? I took yeah. a picture of that yesterday and sent it to my wife. I said, This is what nine o'clock looks like in Keller Williams. There you <laughs> go. That's awesome. That's why I work from home. That's it. That's why yeah, some I people need to work from home to do that. We talked about it with Vlad. Yeah. I was I was driving all the way up here and I'm like I'm in traffic. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. you know That's what's what I mean? awesome about this office. I love home. It's great. Do you suppose that has anything to do with us being number one in units in all of Baltimore yeah, County, sure. Baltimore City? Anything at all? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not an accident, right? right. Why do we have top producers? It's because like they have the signs on the door. And you can go back and look at who has the signs on the door and then look at where they rank and wow, what will I find out? Will they be in the top 20% or the bottom 80%? Top 20, all the time, all, top, all the time. You in the top 20% of team leaders in the country? Number 16. Number 16, out of 700, what percentage is that? Yeah, that's that's top 5 percent. Yeah, you got to sign on the door every day, right? There, so this is what happens. This is why it is the secret of successful people. And it's not anything fancy other than have a goal, write it down, chunk it down, put a time block in, and then it's all about discipline and accountability to actually live that life, to actually live that life. So be purposeful, be thoughtful, be diligent, be consistent. Never let a week go by that you don't stop and plan your week. I do that on Sunday nights, and you see my calendar is all time blocked. I still have week generation time uh, built in my calendar. You can still see it, all of that stuff. Um, and then just constantly doing it. And do I have accountability? Glad you're in the inner circle with me. Do I have to report, like, did I do my activities? Yes. Two Matt's calls, I report into him, I report into to Lori. I mean, that's a lot of people watching, watching my numbers. Um, yeah, keys to successful time blocking. Is this actually posted somewhere? Would you actually post yes, you can download it. We'll, we'll, I'll have Liz email to you guys the whole, okay, cool. the whole slide share. This is part of our lunch and learn. We have it all today. Um, time blocking, handling interruptions, right? This is the sand and the pebbles, probably more the sand and the water that comes in. Um, how do you apply time blocking to your incoming phone calls? What are some of the things you all do to stay in a time block and not let phone calls, that phone ring, take you off? Just record a voicemail message that you don't bother me to. It's a great tactic. Record a voicemail that says, you know, I'll return your calls after 11. Love that. What else? Yeah. For me, in my position, when my boss comes to me, I'm kind of an admin, and what I'll ask is, where's this follow along the priority list? And then, you know, I'll be able to assess, okay, I can do this now, I can do it later. And from there, I make that, you know. It's a great, great point for, for anybody that's admin position, like, does the boss or the leader come to you and attempt? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, that's what they do, right? So it's like, this is what I'm working on now. Does this, what you're giving me now, does it is a higher priority, perfect use of that language than the other stuff? And they're probably going to say, no, nope, do it after that, right? That's a great question. Good. Um, how do you handle drop-in visitors? Anybody have that ever happen to them too much? Eliminated. Yeah. <laughs> Put a sign on the door. Put a sign on the door. What do you think Black does that, right? Then in, in other folks here. The same thing. And set an expectation, right? Can you train the people around you? Yeah. Look, I mean, it's a bold law. We train people how to treat us, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Exactly. Exactly. Um, just say no. Love this one. <laughs> just say no. Clarify the request. That's exactly what you're saying. Like, let me get clarity on this request. Is it a higher priority? Are you asking me to drop this thing? I'm working on sending out those touches that you asked me to, you know, lead generation. Whoa, no, don't mess with that. That's not higher priority. Be polite and firm if you need to say no. Understand that no is a complete sentence. 
You don't have to do the whole dance around, you know, just like no is no is a complete sentence. Suggest alternatives. Like get like you got the text back, like I'll talk to you later, or can we get back together later, or can we push this off till later, you know? I'm lead generating now. Good. Um, those are great things. Other habits to cultivate. These are just bigger term pictures. You might take a picture of this. These are bigger, more long-term things. Is uh, Eventually, you'll do so good at leads and listings that you'll start to bring some leverage into your life. And you'll start to delegate. You'll get talented people around that can help you with this. So choosing the right person, we talked about that. Um, provide them with instructions. What kind of instructions would we provide somebody who's next to us um, that would help us Help, they, help, they would be good at blocking out the interruption of the sea in the water. How would I train them? Share with them what your big rocks are and there you tell go. them your schedule so they know what That's it. It would almost be like this class, right? Mm -hmm. And this is why it matters more because I want to make more money. When I make more money, it's better for you. So here's the priority list. Like John Davis knew the answer, right? Growth, legal, 20% people. So do you suppose his chief of staff or his assistant knows those three priorities in that order? Inside and out. So you block anything below that, right, without even having to come to him before 11 a.m. Perfect. Uh, allow them to own it. Assign, so you get into projects. Allow somebody else to own that project. Explain the whys and the what. Put deadlines on everything. Give them time to learn. Have follow-up communication. 411 every single week is a great system for follow-up communication on how that's going. Be available. Um, avoid reverse delegation. What do we mean by that? What's reverse delegation? When they they back to you. Yeah, when they bounce it back to you. <laughs> we call that giving the job back. Yeah, avoid that. I'm like, well, no, no, you own that. No, I mean, like, they, so in other words, they that would be like when the sand or water comes in, or the the person is is calling your the person next to you, your assistant or your your admin with an issue, and then your admin says, okay, well, here's their cell phone number, or go ahead and ask them. Like, that's, you've, you've asked them to be the blocker on that, right? And then just handing out your own, that would be reverse delegation. Because now you've got to deal with that. Share the credit, give the folks around you credit, and celebrate. Like, those are the best ways to build cultivation. Uh, energy zapper. Just have an awareness of things that will zap your energy, right? At the beginning of the day, we talked about your energy. These are those... The videos and the games and the music, it kills your energy right at the beginning of the day. Um, your own bad habit of procrastination would be a zapper, right? It's, it's getting into that other stuff. So, first of all, have an awareness that procrastination can be eliminated. It's not, you no longer can say, like, well, I'm just a procrastinator, that's how I'm wired, that's how I am, I'm looking that way, I'm always going to say that way. Like, you can change that, you have the ability to change that. The best ways to use it is what we just learned. Like, that tool right there in front of you, the 411 with your calendar and a time block, that will eliminate procrastination. You wake up in the morning, as long as you keep it in front of you, that is. You wake up in the morning, you've got your time block. And then you just have to live it. And at the beginning, it might be difficult, right? It's like starting that new exercise routine. It's hard to get to the gym. And then what happens when you do it every day after like a month? Yeah, and it's almost like if you had to travel that day or you got injured and missed the gym, how do you feel? Yeah, you're way. actually like, wow, I need to get to the gym, I need to get to the gym. Like, you hear people say that, and the rest of them are like, you're crazy, you know? Like, mm -hmm. who wants? But that's what happens, because it became a habit. It became a habit. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then just understand that it, we're human. Like, we do have obstacles, we do have setbacks, we will miss a time block, we will mess up. How you recover from that is the key to everything. It, you will get knocked down, and you will fall down, and you will make a bad choice. That's not good for your goals. And just, just get over it. Just get through it. Just under, be real good about that. This is, let me know where this comes from. The energy plan. We actually call it the millionaire energy plan. It's from the book, the red book, Millionaire Real Estate. It's very end of it. So, um, and you'll, you'll notice, so we talk about meditate, pray, exercise, and eat, hug, kiss, and laugh, plan, and calendar, lead, generate, all by 11 a.m. But look what word is all across that. What word is that? Energy. Right? Energy. And what do you have control over? Your energy and your choice about what to do with your mind. So when you when you do all of these, just think about that. Picture right now in your own mind that by 11 a.m. you've done your meditation and prayer, you did your workout, you ate real healthy, spent time with those that you love, hugging, kissing, laughing, having a good time, joking. 
you looked at your plan, you got your calendar locked in, your day is solid, it's all done, and you did your lead generation, you already called all those people, you already knocked on the door, and you got your appointment set, and it's 11 o'clock. How do you feel right now? Oh, awesome. Like, now comes the sand and the water and the pebbles. How do you feel? You're good. You're good. You're good. You can handle it. You can even ignore it, probably, because you probably make enough money if you want, right? <laughs> I don't know about how long, but you could, you know? That's what you're out to do. You have control over that right there? Yeah. That's it. Do you know what you'll do during this? Now, where will you get your what to do for emotional energy and exercise energy? The other things. We talk about business. Where will you see what your plan is? What tool could you use to track all of that stuff and figure out what activities you need to do to, to be most effective there? Your why, maybe? Like what tool? Why you do, do what you do? Like, what is, I don't know. What, you what start you, with that, right? Yeah. What's why you're doing this, what matters to you, what your goals are wrapped around that. Once you have your goals, like, I could have physical fitness goals for the year, where would I keep track of, like, my activities? There you go, your 4 one that tool in your hand. That's how you end up with a 4 one that has segments, right? You'll have a, a family or an emotional segment, right, that has to do with the hugging, kissing, laughing part, right? You, Yeah, child's play, all that stuff. You'll have, like, I have on here, like, dates with my kids, like, I'm supposed to have a date with my daughter this week, right? Um, like, you'll have that stuff, you know, that rolls up to the relationship I'm looking for with that. And then exercise and eating, right? You look at mine, and it says, like, uh, eat clean 6.5 days. I already crossed that out because it's gone. <laughs> uh, I made bad choices in the long run. There's a lot of brisket and a lot of barbecue sauce, and I made bad choices. Um, uh, you can see it. Read 25 pages of scaling up. Read five pages of Happy Mind. The two books that I'm reading right now, so that I can have, uh, so that I can have two books finished this month, so that I can have 24 books finished this year, of which I've already done eight. Right? See how it all rolls up. Uh, everything. You know, I've got how to build a region out of the, you know, glad, you know, to have completed 12 capper appointments by this week. You know what I mean? Like, all this stuff. Like, it all rolls up so that we can get three cappers to join so that we can hit our financial goals and have 200 agents in this market center, right? I mean, everything's on here. Exactly how many appointments when you have in the mega team? It all rolls up. So you use the 4 and one tool to map all this stuff out, start with your big goals, chunk it down to your weekly activities, Time block all that stuff first. Big rocks in the jar first, and that's it. That's all. That's how it works. So share with me. Um, write down, you know, at least one action. You just you don't have to even do three. One action that you will do as a result of this class to learn this new habit. We talked a lot. We talked about E to P. We talked about 80-20. We talked about the big rocks, four and one, time blocking. Write down one activity you're committed to doing. And make that change in the next 24 hours. There's some research that shows if you don't do it in 24 hours, then you may not do it. So I do my math, my homework, right? It's in the hand when my math's call, coach. I have one of my math calls this morning. And I, do, I have a 30 minute time block after each math call to do my homework right there because if you go along in 24 hours, research shows that it takes, the chances of you doing it are a lot less. And if I don't do it, it's too big a rock, then I email somebody next to me and say, make sure I do this, it's my homework. I'll even forget by the time I All right, so what's, share with me your biggest aha or what you're, what you're committed to doing. What did you get out of today's class? My biggest aha was the, um, the uh, in the beginning when you was talking about um, the leads and listening, because we've had many conversations that I get a lot, a lot of buyer leads. Yeah. So I was like, the whole shoes, everybody coming to the one shoe department and looking versus me running around with all these buyers and consistently hiring people to um, do showing of, of appointments and things like that. Awesome. So you're gonna, my, you're gonna take a lot of listings. Yeah, and I'm gonna do my 411 more. Good, what else you get out today? Give me two more. For me, I said that I was actually gonna assess my goals and set a realistic goal. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm just not the person where I just go for flow 
and you're pulling every direction. I actually don't know where I want to be and you know the goals that I want to set. So you help me realize that yeah. I'm all out here inspiring, but I haven't realized my focal points. I overcome my focal points. Love it. If you haven't designed your life, you're gonna live the one that everybody around you designs for you. Exactly. Good. Good. Last one. Uh, two things. One, you're not sure about on my phone. There you go. <laughs> you're not, you're not sure about phone. Awesome. All right, you guys did great today. Great job. I don't know where the lunch is at the learn lunch and learn part, but um, <laughs> <laughs> or that we we double.